In this tutorial, we're going to talk about probability density functions. It's a broad, rich topic. I couldn't begin to explain it all, and I'm going to need to simplify. But I hope that it whets your appetite and you'll want to learn more about it. A discrete variable is a variable that it comes in certain values and not others. A continuous variable can take on any value within a certain range. So here I have integers roughly between negative 10 and 10, and in a discrete variable they can only come in integers. In a continuous variable they can come on any value, negative 2.68324, and we can keep on going, and we can be as precise as we want. In practice we have to round eventually, but in theory a continuous variable there's no rounding. Now discrete variables can take on values that are not integers. For example, we could have a discrete variable that is something like 0, 1 half, 1, 1 and a half, and so forth, or any kind of interval that we want. What makes it a discrete variable is that there are no values between certain numbers. In the last tutorial, we took a continuous variable, like so, and we in essence made it into a discrete variable, like so. That is, we sliced it into bins. All the values from negative 7 and a half to negative 6 and a half we said, well, that's going to be negative 7. And anything from negative 6 and a half to negative 5 and a half, we're going to call that negative 6. And then we plotted it like so in a histogram. But we didn't have to make our bins one number wide. We could have chosen any width that we wanted to. For example, we could take the width and slice it in half. So now, all the values from negative 7.25 to negative 6.75, we're going to call that 7. And so each bin is one half wide. Here we have the bins that's one quarter wide. And we could go to one eighth and, and so forth. We can make these bins as thin as we like. Now, in a small sample size, we only have 100 here. Eventually, if we keep slicing the bins, the frequency will be one for everything. So what we need is to have very thin slices, very small bins, and a very large sample size. If we do that, eventually the tops of the bins form a nice smooth curve like this. So this is what this curve represents is very thin bins and a very large sample size. And the tops of the bins form this nice line like so. And what it represents is the probability density function for this particular variable. It says values that are around negative 10, not very probable. Values around 1, negative 1, 0, they're much more probable. Values that are higher, around 10 or so, become very improbable. This curve can be described by an equation that was discovered by Gauss. Other people were working on something similar, but Gauss usually gets credit for this. So this curve here is described by this equation. It's a little complicated, a little bit intimidating, but what you can see here is it's 1 divided by the square root of 2 times pi times this number sigma squared, and then we multiply it by e, the base of the natural logarithm, and this exponent. And the exponent has a value x on this line here, and then it has this thing, it's a mu of x, and we subtract, and then we square the whole thing, we divide by 2 times this sigma again, squared. Now what are these mu's and sigma's? Mu, in this case, means the mean. Mu sub x means the mean of x. The mean is the middle value. In this case, it happens to be 0. So the mean of this distribution is 0. And then this sigma here, this Greek letter S, stands for standard deviation. I'll have a lot more to say about that at some point. But what it means in this situation here is how wide is this distribution. This distribution could have been skinny like this, or it could have been even wider like that. And so this sigma, it represents how wide the distribution is. This notation here means there's this variable x, and the, this tilde means distributed as. This x is distributed as a normal distribution. That's what the n means. And in the normal distribution, there are two numbers that we care about, the mean and the standard deviation. So the whole thing together means x is a normally distributed variable with a particular mean and a particular standard deviation. In this case, the mean is 0, and the standard deviation is 3. So if we substitute in these numbers 0 right here, and 3 here, and we'll square it, and also here, and we'll square it, we get this. And then if we simplify, we get this. So the probability of x equals 1 divided by the square root of 18 times pi times e to the negative x squared divided by 18, and we'll get this line exactly. The normal distribution is certainly not the only distribution. There are many, many distributions. And some of them are quite exotic, but the normal distribution is the one we see most in psychological measurement. Here's a more exotic one. It's called the log normal distribution. What it says is that values from 0 to 2, they're pretty common. As we move up, the values become much less common. 
and there are no values less than zero. Here's something that's a little less exotic, the uniform distribution. It's a distribution where we define some range between A and B. They could be any numbers. In this case, it's negative 2 and 7. And we say all of the values between negative 2 and 7, they're all equally probable. That is, the probability is 1 over B minus A. So if we substitute in negative 2 and 7, the probability is 1 -fifth. For, for all of these values here. Depicted below is a uniformly distributed variable with a sample size of about 100. And you can see that there are gaps, but that's just because of sampling error. There are many, many other probability density functions. If you've taken a statistics course, you may have heard of a t-test or an f-test or a chi-square. All of these tests have certain distributions. There's a chi-square distribution, there's an f distribution, there's a t distribution, and they all have their own particular de probability density functions. But I'm going to leave it at this for now. Next time we're going to talk about the expected value. It has to do with probability density functions and the mean.